Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is Haley, and I have mitochondrial DNA disease and my channel is all about living life with chronic illness and in today's video I'm going to be sharing what I would pack for the hospital if I had to go for any reason. I want to preface this video by saying that I am not intending to go to the hospital anytime soon. I'm not thinking I will. It was just a video idea that I thought some of you guys might like to see because sometimes I like watching these videos. So I feel like I should show you the bag I would use. I use this for my infusions. It's just this. It has like ivy pumps in it right now. But this roller backpack from Amazon. And it's really good and really sturdy. But this would be the bag I would use to put everything in. So the most important thing before anything else on this list that you should pack is medications. If you are in... If you are on any medications for any reason, and even if you think you'll be admitted to the hospital, or you don't think you'll be admitted to the hospital, if you have meds that are time sensitive like I do, I have specific times each day where I need my meds, or else my body goes crazy and I get very symptomatic, what we do is we bring all meds and we actually bring them to the ER. Now, I'm going to be really really honest about the ER. Everybody there, at least the hospital I go to now, is amazing. We are very blessed. However, there is a thing called hospital time. And in the ER, it is really hard, at least in my experience with several different hospitals, it is really hard when you're in the ER to get everything, to get all your meds down there from the pharmacy it's a lot of work it takes a long time and again if you're time sensitive like I have a set time I can't go past a certain time without certain meds so we always bring it in and that's something really important to do if I'm doing okay if I'm really sick like I was a few years ago there's no possible way but if it's something not simple but you go to the ER for example something with your port or your central line or something like that um, that's really, really important to bring. And also bring a list of your medications and all the dosages. That is so incredibly helpful. It's so helpful. The next thing I would pack is at least one change of clothes. No matter what, no matter what, we, um, always bring, I always bring a comfy change of clothes. So, pants like, pants like these are great. They're comfy. And, um, usually pants can last me two to three days. That might sound gross in the hospital. That might sound a little gross, but, um, yeah. But I have large flowy v-neck shirts, which I could care less if blood is on them, IV fluid, if betadine gets on it, if I throw up on it, if anything happens. Those are the shirts I will wear. I never wear any shirts that I like actually care about and wear on a day-to-day -day basis. So I typically don't wear shoes when I go to the ER. Instead, I wear these slippers. They're a few years old now and I actually got them in a gift shop at the hospital. My mom got them for me, but I only wear these when I go to the hospital. I keep my feet warm and they have the traction so it's not slippery. So they work, especially because I don't do a lot of walking. These are a must-have in my opinion. They are so much more comfy than shoes and I can put them in the wash and they'll be good to go because hospitals have lots and lots of germs. Along with that, there are times where I do bring fuzzy socks because they're so soft and warm because my feet do get pretty cold in the hospital, as well as the obvious necessities like a hairbrush and deodorant and toothbrush and toothpaste which I won't show all of those but those are obviously I would pack those also obviously so another thing I mean these aren't necessities but these are nice to have is some sort of device whether it be my iPod or it be something else just something that I can play a game on or I can read a book on or watch a show really any of those things um, to keep me occupied and sometimes I will bring a book but it honestly completely depends on my situation and why we are in the ER. 
Also, chargers. <laughs> it's really easy to forget chargers. That happened to me and my dad. We made the mistake of going to the ER without any chargers, thinking we would be in and out in a few hours, and I was in the hospital for 10 days. So chargers and headphones are nice to have as well. Obviously, this will completely depends on your situation, whether you can eat orally or not, or drink orally. Um, I know everybody is different. Some of the times I was in the hospital, I was MPO, which meant I couldn't really eat anything because my because I did have pancreatitis a while back and my body would go against me if I ate anything. But if I'm doing good with my all of my GI issues, I do bring a Lara bar at least. Lifesavers, they're protein bars, as well as bringing a bottle of water. Lifesavers as well. I also bring, now again, this might depend on your situation and what you use or not, but I always bring a small pack of mini doTERRA essential oils. Um, lavender and Serenity help me sleep. It's really hard for me to sleep in the hospital, even if I have melatonin, even if I go to bed earlier than usual. It's super hard for me to fall asleep. So I definitely bring these. Also, there are some oils that help my anxiety because my anxiety and tends to ramp up when I'm in the hospital and I go and I can get pretty emotional as well and honestly in my opinion this last item is something that I don't think I would be able to go to the hospital without and that is to have a cuddle buddy I have one and yes I'm 17 yes I still sleep with stuffed animals and stuff like that but it brings me a lot of comfort and when I'm in the hospital especially it brings me so much more comfort. Um, but I always typically leave them in the car until we know for sure I'm being admitted so we don't have to go through the whole process of washing stuff. Um, but I do like to have a stuffed animal or a cuddle buddy or something to just be there, kind of like a comfort blanket type of thing. And, you know, it just feels good snuggling something in the hospital. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I love seeing a sneak peek into what people would bring to the hospital. So hopefully you like this. Make sure to subscribe down below. Click that notification bell so you will be notified every time I post a new video. Don't forget to like this video. Comment down any suggestions, any questions, any comment, anything whatsoever. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.